All right, guys. So as I promised, I supposed to make this video going through all the features in this shader. But before we do that, uh, we need to uh, do a few things in our project setting. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, turning on our distance field. So we go through settings, project setting, and and we search for uh, distance fields. Uh, halfway through, we will see that uh, we get this uh, option generate uh, mesh distance field. The second thing is. Uh, it's really up to you guys if you want to use it or not. Uh, so in this uh, demo scene, I'm using a planner uh, reflection, which uh, is giving me accurate uh, reflection. But uh, if you can see, if I turn it off, it's still it's looking fine. It's uh, but however, having it inside gonna really help you. Um, but that one thing uh, is that it's pretty heavy. You can see my uh, FPS is around 20, 30. But uh, when I turn it off I go up to 60 FPS per second FPS so uh, I'm suggesting you guys uh, consider uh, the performance cost that this one has before using it so and uh, right now I'm going to jump uh, right into the shader setting so when you when we come here you will see that uh, we have a few shaders starting with MI that is uh, standing from material instance and all these instances were created by uh, from our uh, ma master material so what happened here was uh, you can right click create your material instances uh, why one one of them we have here you are not having it in your own project I just created this one uh, for our uh, uh, demonstration purpose. So uh, I'm going to assign, select my water and assign this one. And okay, uh, now I'm going to go through. So I made some uh, obvious uh, colors, so contrasted, so we can see uh, the differences and everything. So I'm going to first go through the main options we have up here. Then we go one by one, maybe through the uh, features, uh, maybe uh, by the order we have here. It's not gonna really. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, the first setting we will see is our opacity. Uh, so, opacity is very obvious. So, if I put it to zero, I'm getting uh, crystal clear water, and if I put it one, it's op opaque, and that's about it. Uh, but uh, when we come down here, uh, we are having our normal map that is using a default normal map for the waves. Maybe now we cannot see it really properly, and that's because. Uh, we have few settings here to control our normal intensity, the speed of it, and the size of it. So now uh, my intensity is 0.3, which is a pretty uh, small number. If I put it, let's say, 1, now I'm getting more. If I just want to, just for the preview purpose, I just put it 2. So now I'm getting a pretty strong uh, waves. And now I can change the size to make it bigger, smaller. I can uh, use the wave speed as well, just to change the speed. Uh, from now on, I'm not going to go through the ones that are pretty obvious what they're going to do. So, <clears throat> uh, coming back up here, we have our uh, watercolor number one, number two, which you can see how they're working. The number one is the shallower one. The number two is the deeper color. So, uh, and this color contrast uh, is gonna control the contrast between two colors that we have. Uh, if you actually go and uh, go on top of the name, like color contrast here, you will see some of the settings, not all of them have a description. So this one says that control the contrast between color one and two. So uh, just to demonstrate that you can see when I push it, my red color is pushing further into my blue color. And when I reduce it, I'm getting, uh, more uh, fainted uh, red or orange. And uh, the color depth also, it means how deep are uh, the blue color. So uh, how deep our uh, second color, which is uh, our the deepest color going to be. So if I go lower, so you can see the depth is becoming lower. So that color is pushing through the surface, the blue one. And if I go for a higher number, I can, you can see that it's like going lower and lower. and I'm getting the red to be more expanded through the surface. Uh, let me actually put this one 
a reasonable, reasonable number, and the roughness is a pretty standard roughness. The shore, uh, the shoreline fade is about the fade that we are getting here. You can see we can still the water is here, but we can we are having a little bit of transparency before we go all the way to uh, opaque water. So um, if I lower this number, you can see that that color is pushing closer and closer. And if I go for a bigger number, it's like becoming, uh, pushing more through the center. Um, the next uh, setting we have is our metallic value. Um, I know it's water, uh, but uh, if something, if a value is going to help you sell the effect even more, so it's, you can go for it. I think uh, the metallic going to give it a better water looking. Uh, so if I reduce it, you will see if I put it at zero, it's become pretty fainted. So. Uh, if I put it 0 0.5, 0 0.9, yeah, so. The fake, okay, so the fake uh, refraction intensity is uh, what uh, I'm going to, to show the effect. I need to put my opacity to lower number, maybe 0 0.6. Uh, so now we can see that uh, my uh, refraction, the intensity of my refraction, uh, it's kind of the distortion it's making it, it is controlled directly by my wave uh, directly by my uh, wave intensity so if I put my intensity to one I get lower refraction if I put it to zero I get no refraction so but if I put it to 0 0.1 I'm getting just a little bit but now with the zero point still I, uh, I can control the refraction uh, independently from how much uh, my wave intensity or my normal intensity is. So if I put it to zero, you see there's no refraction, but still you can see how the normal map is, it has its own intensity if I increase it to two. So I guess uh, now you guys understand what I'm talking about. So uh, it's pretty controllable by you. So put it 0 0.1 or even you put it one, so it become pretty intense. So I'm going to put my normal to one, the refraction intensity it is on what it is. And, and next thing we're going to talk about is our uh, vertex paint layers. So uh, we have two vertex paint uh, channels, which is our red channel and green channel. Uh, by default, our uh, mask layer or our red channel is uh, unable. So our leaf channel is not. Uh, if you want to use both channels, you can uh, turn on the other one as well. Uh, but now, since we don't have any vertex paint information on the surface, uh, nothing is happening. So um, I can keep these things off. So it means that I'm just using the default uh, material is used here. Go to the paint, uh, use the red channel and paint something, or go to the green channel, paint something else or I can use both channels and paint both of them at the same time. Uh, and the material or type of uh, material we are painting here, if it's a moss, if it's a leaves, uh, if it's some uh, lily pads, trash, or whatever it is, uh, it all uh, depending on you. Right now, these are the default. I know the name is moss or the name is leaves, but you can replace it with whatever you want. Uh, you just need to turn on each layer and replace them back for the moss to be, uh, if you want to. So actually you can see on the other shader here, instead of uh, leaves, I'm using some uh, lily pads. They are sort of leaves, but it could be anything. Um, and uh, you have uh, you have some uh, setting for it, like uh, the blend power is gonna help you to uh, having more contrasted blend. You can see how like here is getting less contrasted and more contrasted. Uh, so that's about our uh, blend power. Our uh, noise intensity is how much the movement of, so the movement of the vertex painted layer is uh, independent from the movement of our water. So you can uh, make it to move uh, the intensity to be higher. So you can see that right now our um, mass is going to uh, move uh, a little bit more intense. Or if I uh, make the noise speed like to, let's say something like 10, you can see how our mass is just having this uh, weird movement because we use the excessive number. Uh, but if I put back all these numbers, uh, the scale also is about the scale of the whole thing. And uh, the good thing about this shader is it's a tile all over the map. You can see I'm using uh, six different uh, planes, but uh, if I ungroup these planes, you'll see that they are all different planes 
uh, their UV from zero to one in Maya or what uh, 3D software you're using. And you will see that uh, none of these textures having a seam line. They are moving completely without a seam. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. Even uh, so, this is a, this comes in handy when you are trying to uh, let's say from for here uh, you don't want to use one full big uh, plane to uh, use it. You can do it, but what what if you are doing a bigger surface that you want to place them like a puzzle? So you can do that. But even if you want to just delete the rest of them and resize this if I resize this bigger you will see nothing no pattern is going to change other than my uh, vertex paint because the vertex paint is the vertex paint information on those vertices sure if I resize it it's going to get bigger but you see that the wave patterns or the size of the uh, leaves or moss not changing at all with resizing that um, object itself so I'm just going back to where I was so uh, that's about our uh, vertex pen layers. I think I covered uh, everything about them. So we are going to move to the next feature. So the next feature I'm going to talk about is a pretty simple feature to use. Is uh, let me actually go and remove all my uh, vertex paint from my shader from my object. So now uh, I'm going to show how the Maybe we can uh, remove the intensity of the waves or make them like 0.2 so we can see per when the rain applies. So uh, it's off by default. I turn it on and there we go. We have rain and you can come down until you find the rain. So you know, we can close these windows so we can see the foam. The foam I'm going to talk after the rain, but uh, the rain intensity can be 0.2, like very small ripples. The size of them can go smaller, the speed, so all normal stuff that we have. Uh, and foam. So uh, the foam is already activated by default, so um, unless you want to turn it off, you don't need to activate here, So it's because it means by default it's on. If I turn it off, then we're going to get a little bit of uh, compiling shaders, and it's off now. But uh, since I'm going to show you the settings here, so here is the color, uh, pretty standard. Uh, the foam fade is about how uh, how much fade is the same as our uh, shoreline fade, how much fade it gets from the shoreline. And then uh, we have foam opacity, which is its overall intensity. And uh, so I put them as a two. And then I'm going to change my foam radius, and you'll see that. If I'm having a look from the top, you can see that the radius is actually the radius of that foam that is uh, surrounding objects. Um, we had, I can put it back to whatever it was, and the speed also same. If I put one, it's going to be really fast. Sure, for a calm water like this, we don't want to have something like this. Uh, maybe 0 0.3 it was, yeah. So this is about our foam. Uh, so now that we covered the foam, the so let's see, we covered the foam, we covered the leaves, moss, rain. Uh, we haven't covered the Gerstner waves. Let's uh, cover that for our next step. So the uh, these waves are different from what we had, the normal map waves. Those are just, those are uh, flat uh, illusion of the waves. There are no movements. If I increase the intensity, you will see that if I even increase my wave intensity to two, yeah, the look of it looks so um, wavy, but the movement is still is like slow. So if I put this around one and then come down here, there is an intensity, overall intensity here, that if I increase it first to, it's from zero to one. So if I put it one, uh, it means, uh, it's its maximum intensity. Don't go higher than one. If you want to increase it, I try to use this uh, other number. So there are exactly two identical set of uh, settings. So one of them is called uh, the height, uh, steepness, length, and speed for the first one, and the second one also. So these are two waves that are going in different uh, directions, uh, just to have a little bit of a randomness right there. So uh, before I go through all these settings, um, I'm going to talk about the tessellation. So a tessellation is going to help us to get uh, more, to divide our mesh into more polys. So uh, right now you can see this mesh if I go to my uh, wireframe. Uh, I have a decent amount of 
the police to support the movement. So that's why the movement looking nice. You can see the waves. It's not so sharp or looking weird. But uh, if I had less, uh, if my mesh was divided uh, less than what we have right now, I could use this number to increase the tessellation or divide it more. Uh, so now I'm selecting, it doesn't show me, but if I deselect it, uh, you can see that when I get closer, and it's actually, it's camera based as well. So when you get closer, you get more tessellation. Uh, you better actually use uh, like uh, manually, um, if you want to use very intense waves, which this shader is not really uh, designed to have like those sort of uh, sea or ocean kind of waves that going crazy but if you want to have something like that uh, it's better to use uh, you can divide your mesh a bit but it's better to also use the tessellation as well because uh, like it's camera based so when it gets further from your camera you're getting uh, less of those numbers but now because we have enough uh, subdivision here now it's like it's more than enough because we don't have enough information or height information to be here unless I make my wavelengths very small. Uh, so this is about the tessellation, but uh, let's go back to, let me put back this number so I don't get any tessellation. So I'm going to talk only about one of these because the rest of the things is the same. Uh, so the, the height of the wave, it's completely obvious what is it. It's like how high the wave gonna go. So if I put it 10, it's like, it's gonna be pretty high. And uh, the steepness also is like how sharp it gets at its highest peak. So if I make it one, you will see it becomes like really sharp waves going around it's too much. This is 0.5, looking more reasonable. You can see it's coming it's one way because the other wave that is going the other direction with not touching it. Uh, these are the things that we're going to touch here. So the the length of it is like um, I'm gonna change it and you will see the length. If I make it very small numbers, like they're gonna be so frequently. Uh, passing by, so 500 was a good number here, and the speed of it. Um, that should be about all the features we have for now. Uh, I hope I explained everything so far. So, uh, hope you enjoy uh, watching this video, and uh, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can uh, message me in my artistation account, uh, and I'm uh, I will try to get back to you as uh, soon as possible. Thank you so much.